and hello everyone welcome back to a new video I switched over to using VS Code it's just kind of a bit better than using some of text because now I'm actually using an IDE which can be great for debugging and things like that and I actually recommend that once you get comfortable with your first programming language whether it be Python or JavaScript or whatnot that you also switch to an IDE such as VS Code Anyways, today we'll be talking about higher order functions in Python. It may sound like really difficult and stuff, but it's actually just a function that takes another function as an argument. So basically, let's create a function here, and we can just call this maybe something like multi-func, from like multi-function, and then it takes in a function. And then that function arg, so I'm going to do if arg one because that's because this argument is going to be passed into this function, and then if arg two, so we're going to take in two arguments. Then we can go here and say return func. Oops, my bad, func. And here we can just say if arg one and if arg two. Now basically what's going to happen is we're going to make this, we're going to call this, and it's going to take in a function, an argument, and a second argument. This is going to call this function within this function, and it's just going to pass in these two arguments. This is a very simple example, and yeah, I believe this is great for beginners. So let's go ahead and create a function. Let's call it sum, and sum takes an x and y. Now sum should return x plus y. So let's try and use it. I'm going to just print it out and you can save it into a variable if you want to. But anyways, print and here we can just say multifunc and here we can say sum and then the arguments we want to pass in which let's say is 10 and 5 so it's going to give us 15. Let's run it and see what we get and then I can explain it a bit more. We get 15. So basically, what we did is we just took sum and we passed it in here. So there you can see func. And then we got the arguments that we want to pass into it. So these two right here. And we passed those into it as arguments. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult to understand. I'll give you another example just so we can get the hang of it. So let's create another function and call it maybe like add twice and this add twice function will take in a func so a function and an arg so and for an argument then here we can return function and I don't know why I added in brackets I guess it doesn't matter, but you know, just keep it a little bit clean, we can just do that. So anyways, then we can call func, and inside of func, we can call func again, and pass in arg. Now this looks much more difficult, but it's kind of the same thing that comes out of it. So let's create a function, define, and we can call it add 10, for example. And 10 will take an x, which it can just return as x plus 10. Let's try and call this. So let's say print add twice add and here you can say 10 and then the argument we want to pass in. Now let's say we want to add 10 to 5. Let's quickly see what the output is we get. We get 25. Now don't worry, this looks very confusing, but I'll break it down for you. So let's see what's happening. So Basically, to get 25, we go through this. And we say, okay, function and argument. Then we say add twice and then the add 10. So add 10 actually takes in another add 10. And then that add 10 adds 10 to that. So let's say 5. So we start out with 5 and then we add a 10 to it. So that's plus 10, which is equal to 15. And now this right here returns 15. So then this function which is still add, still add 10 because 
and we're passing it in. So then add 10 adds 10 to 15 because remember this turns into 15 because this returns 15. Because argument, which is 5, is x plus 10, that's 15, and then that will be 15. So then it's 10 plus 15, so 10 plus 15 is equal to 25. So you just basically added 10 twice by just adding a number there. And boom, that is how that works. It might have been a little bit confusing. And believe me, if you don't practice it, it's definitely going to stay confusing. But now you at least know about it. So if you ever see it in the future when you work with it in a workspace or something like that, then you know what's actually happening. So remember the innermost function executes first, and then that function will alter what happens to the outer functions. And yeah, I hope you all uh, understood, at least for the most part, and I will see you all again in the next video where we will be covering lambda functions. Bye.